There we go. Right, evening everybody. It is uh, Thursday the 7th of April and um, if you have watched my last uh, whiskey, Paul John, you may remember that I said that I had something special to share with you. Uh, and I'm hoping that um, family and friends are watching this as well um, because I have, an eye, have a feeling that you probably haven't been watching many of these because you're probably not that interested in whiskey and, and you don't like charity or anything like that, you bad people, you. Um, but I've asked as many people on my personal Facebook feed to watch this because I have something that I need to share with you um, from myself and my wife, Vicky. Um, the clue is in the whiskey that I am reviewing um, <clears throat> because my challenge is probably going to get a bit harder, to be perfectly honest. Um, tonight's whiskey is called Hudson Baby Bourbon and the reason that I've picked Hudson Baby Bourbon is because of this. We are having another baby. Yes, we are having a third child and um, it, we had the scan today, hence me being able to show you this and hence me being able to tell you um, and not being able to tell you beforehand. Um, due early October by the sounds of it. Um, we don't know what sex it is because you can't find that out on the 12 week scan um, but I can pretty much guarantee it's a girl and I can guarantee it's a girl because I've got two of them already. So um, yes, it's gonna make the challenge a bit tricky particularly at the back end of the year um, but hey, it wouldn't have been a challenge otherwise. I probably th should have thought about that head because from what I can figure out the conception was just before I started the challenge, so I didn't really think that one through, did I? But um, yes, that's why I'm doing this one. Um, I thought I'd tell everybody now so that I can do the review, and if you're not really that interested, then you can switch off now and um, get on with your life. So uh, yeah, Hudson Baby Bourbon. Um, now it was, uh, I've got a sample here. This was actually donated by a guy called James Hope, um, a guy I met in Sheffield who really kindly donated, I think it was eight or nine whiskies in the end, predominantly bourbons. Um, and this particular one I was quite chuffed with because uh, A, I knew that I was gonna have to do this announcement. Um, and also, um, I have a Hudson baby of my own. And he said, oh, I've got this Hudson baby, it's 100% corn. I was like, oh, brilliant, because I've got a Hudson baby bourbon as well. And, um, I'm going to get sick of saying Hudson Baby Bourbon. I've got Hudson at home that um, Vicky actually bought me when she went over to the States uh, on her own with, with our youngest and left me at home in England with my oldest for a week, which I was really chuffed with. But she came back with a bottle of um, this Hudson Baby Bourbon whiskey. So I was like, oh, well, I could probably do one and the other. You know, I could do the 100% corn that you've given me, which is this. And then you can also, you know, I could do this particular one. Now, the only trouble is, is that this is also the 100% corn. This is exactly the same whiskey that, that James has supplied me with. So James, I do apologize. Um, you didn't actually need to give me this. It saves me opening that one. Um, but uh, yes, it's one and the same. So I'm just gonna do this particular one. So Hudson Baby Bourbon saying it yet again, is from uh, a distillery called, now I'm gonna pronounce it Tuffleton, but it's spelled Tut Hill Town. So it might be pronounced Tut Hill Town as well, distillery. Uh, it's in a place called Gardner in New York, and this is where it is in relation to the majority of the rest of the US. Now, Tuffleton Grist Mill um, is a flour mill that's been open since 1788. And in 2001, it was actually, it's actually on the uh, National Register of Historic Places. So it's a bit like um, grade one buildings in the UK. You can only do certain things to them um, because they're kind of areas or buildings of national interest. Um, and in 2001, a guy called Ralph Arenzo um, bought the, the mill, uh, the whole mill itself. Now he was a rock climber who'd been rock climbing for about 25 years. He had his own uh, company that was basically providing kind of technical things for rock climbers and rock climbing companies and things like that. Uh, it was his own business going really well and he bought the mill with a view of opening like a rock climbing ranch um, because there are some kind of, not mountains, but there are some really good rock climbing um, areas in, in the local area. So he wanted to build this kind of center and ranch for rock climbers to come and stay, eat, sleep, climb rocks, which is rock, rock climbers do, obviously. Um, but the local community said, no, 
like, not having you don't like we, we don't want you to do that whatsoever so he was kind of stuck with the mill and didn't really know what to do with it and then in two um, sort of a, a couple of years later he met a guy called Brian Lee now Brian Lee was a guy who was a technical designer for um, a company that provided facilities for TV companies um, so really kind of technical guy and Brian and Ralph got together and basically founded the Tattletown Spirits Company and they converted one of the uh, mill houses into a micro distillery and in 2005 was their first releases where basically they were making vodka using scraps of apples from an apple slicing factory nearby kind of grew, they got more involved in the local community, they got more involved with local farmers, they then started buying barley and grain from um, local farmers lit literally within a 10 mile radius and started distilling whiskey as well. So that is how we come to the Hudson Baby Bourbon, which is 100% corn. Now to be bourbon, you need to be at least 51% corn. It needs to be matured in brand new um, charred oak casks. There's a couple of other bits that I can't remember off the top of my head because I've got baby brain already. Um, but it, essentially it was kind of a case of, wait, this is bourbon but 100% corn. Oh, well, actually it ticks the boxes to be called bourbon. So um, this is the first distillery in New York to be operating since Prohibition as well. So it's, um, it's very highly regarded. Now it's not owned by William Grant and Sons, but they do have the rights to distribute it, which is why you're starting to find it um, in more and more places. You start to find it in the UK. Um, crap, I didn't double check how much the price was. I think it's about 60 quid a bottle, something like that. Now it's only a 50 CL as well. Um, in fact, no, this one's a 30, 37 and a half. So this is a half bottle, it's not even a 50 CL. Um, and this one's bottled at 46%. Now they, um, they bottle them in batches and they're actually handwritten on the label. Um, now if you go to the Tuffleton um, distillery website, um, and there is a page on Hudson Bourbon. There's a really, really good little video um, on there where they tell you about sort of the processes that they're going through and what's at the distillery and everything like that. Here's a picture of the distillery itself and like a visitor center that they've got. Very rustic, not modern at all, but you know, bags of character. Um, and this, is, this has become really, really highly regarded and also not very well regarded by some drinkers as well. Looking at reviews and comments on um, various websites about this, some people absolutely love it and other people can't stand the stuff. So I'm intrigued to try it. I'm really looking forward to this because I've been sat on this bottle for about 18 months um, and just never got around to opening it. So it's it was kind of handy, although I feel a bit guilty for James to be able to provide me with the um, uh, sample. Um, now on that video, there's actually quite quite an interesting bit where they've got all the casks stacked up where it's all maturing and the casks are like port pipes, they're really small casks. And they've got them all stacked up, kind of sat on top of each other. And um, Ralph's son, whose name I completely forget, Gable, I think his name was, um, he was saying that they, they needed a way to kind of agitate the casks to essentially get the whiskey inside and the spirit inside working with the wood more and kind of maturing more by moving it around and being able to kind of have more interaction with wood but they've got loads of cast stacked up so what are they going to do and apparently brian came up with this idea and he grabbed a load of speakers big big massive speakers and basically pumped a load of bass through so they've got all these speakers scattered in amongst all the casks and they play really bassy music i mean presumably heavy metal or something like that and I'm hoping not something like this Skrillex dubstep crap that they've got going on although that probably would actually fit the bill um, and it agitates the whiskey inside the cask and gets it interacting with the wood so whether there's any other distilleries going up to stuff like that I've, I've no idea but um, yeah it was uh, you know one way of doing it I suppose um, here's a picture of Ralph and Brian by the way um, that's what they look like and uh, it seemed like a couple of great guys like I say check this video out because it's really really good indeed so if you start me with this far obviously you're not my good friends and family because they've probably bugged off by now um, so already on the nose that classic to me bourbon character of deep rich dark fruits um, slightly caramelized sugar a little bit of spiciness on it cloves cinnamon yeah, there is a proper Christmas spice on that as well. Cloves are definitely coming through as well. A little bit of marzipan as well, actually. Yeah, ooh, I've got a feeling I might like this. 
I think I could um, could quite enjoy this one. It's a little bit hotter than I thought it was going to be, just initially, but it dies down. It's on the lighter side of bourbon as well. It's not as richly, intensely fruity as I thought it was going to be on the nose. And there is quite a heat at the back of the throat. It's very warming though. It's not harsh, it's not rough. It's very warming, kind of down here. This would be lovely in like a cold day or if, uh, if you're feeling a little bit under the weather because it really warms you and just spreads to your chest. Not as intensely fruity as I thought it might be, but there's still that dark fruit, that kind of raisiny, curranty, sultanery, fruitcakey vibe. It's only a four-year-old as well, in fact, slightly under four-year-old. So it's still a very young whiskey and might need a little bit more aging. It'd be very interesting to see what this is like at like a six to eight, something like that, just with a little bit extra. It feels a little bit tighter than it needs to be. The nose is promising an awful lot. And yeah, on the palate, it's just not quite opening enough, up enough for my liking. In terms of bourbons, I always prefer them slightly smoother. Um, you know, Angel's Envy, um, Basil Hayden, that sort of stuff. That's the thing that floats my boat. Things like Booker's, uh, Baker's, where it's got that spicy heat um, and the slightly more dry character. This is halfway in between those. There is some, there's a light touch to it. There is some sweetness in there, but there's just a little bit, little bit too much hotness and a little bit too much fire for me um, that it just, it could just do with a little bit more mellowing out. Having said that, it's a good bourbon. There's nothing wrong with it. Oh, got mint on that one. Where did that come from? Yep, yeah, definitely got mint there. Like a real, right on the edge of the tongue. Like a peppermint. Yeah, peppermint type flavor as well. Wasn't expecting that. Um, yeah, if you like your bourbons and you like things like, say, Baker's or Booker's or Maker's Mark, that sort of thing, that that's closer to the line rather than the richer, softer style of, like I say, the Basil Hayden or um, even Jim Beam, something like that. Good bourbon though, really, really good. There's not really a Duff bourbon, to be perfectly honest, in, in my book. Um, but yeah, very, very nice indeed. So, now you know. Now you know what I've got to part with. Now you know what I've got to face in October, um, because it's going to get really, really difficult, more in terms of being able to get the time to do the videos, because at the moment, I've got a good routine of get the kids to bed, come downstairs, um, do the video, do the editing the following morning or the following evening, get it uploaded, blah, blah, blah. Now I've got to figure out about a baby that's not going to have a particular bedtime or is going to be screaming or Vicky's going to be feeling crap and at a wit's end and all this lot, as well as two girls that are just mental. Um, so it's going to be fun and it's gonna make the challenge even more challenging. So your support would be really, really appreciated um, in terms of spreading the word. And if you can tell people that I am doing this challenge and it's just got a hell of a lot harder, that would be much appreciated. If you can spread the word about getting uh, donations in terms of either drams or to uh, the Children's Heart Surgery Fund. Um, but yes. You'd think I'd learn, wouldn't you? But no, three times. That's it now, no more after this. I'm chopping the thing off after this one turns up. The girl, because it's gonna be a girl. I can guarantee it's a girl. But after that, no more, definitely no more. And I probably will need to do two drams a day because I'll be that stressed out and worked up. But there, there we go. Announcement over. I shall see you at the next one when normality should return, he says. Cheers.